Welcome to Jordan. Those words I've heard from any single person meeting along the way while traveling around the country. I'd like to start my Jordanian series from the capital of Jordan, Amman. It's the largest city in the country, with population is about 5 million inhabitants, and it's a vibrant heart of the Kingdom of Jordan, accounting for 40% of its population. The earliest evidence of settlement in Amman dates to the 8th millennium BC during the Neolithic period, where the world's oldest statues of the human form have been unearthed. During the 2nd millennium BC, the city known as Rabat Amman served as the capital of the Ammonite Kingdom centered at the Amman Citadel. Amman was originally built over seven hills, and each area is named after the hill on which it lies. Today the city has grown to span a total of 19 hills. On the city's highest hill is the archaeological site of Amman Citadel, watches over the old town like a primeval guardian. The area dates to the Bronze Age, although it's comprised of rebuilds from the later periods. The two giant standing pillars are the remains of the Roman Temple of Hercules. Once connected to the Forum downtown, the temple was built during the reign of Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, the 2nd century AD. The only obvious remains are part of the podium and the columns, which are visible from around town. To the south of the temple, there is a small Byzantine basilica, most of which has been destroyed by earthquakes. It dates to the 6th century AD and features well-preserved architectural elements and remnants of its original structure. The monumental gateway was constructed on the remains of an earlier building from the late 4th century CE. The large gateway was the formal entrance to the residential terminus of Umayyad era. The citadel's most impressive series of historic buildings is focused around Umayyad Palace, the domed audience hall designed to impress visitors to the royal palace. The most intact of the buildings on the site, the hall, is shaped like a cross mirroring the Byzantine church over which it was built. The ancient cistern was designed to collect and store rainwater, ensuring a reliable water supply for the palace's residents and the city's inhabitants. A courtyard to the north of the hall leads to a 10-meter wide colonnade street, lined with the numerous arches and columns, and flanked by residential administrative buildings. Further to the north is the former governor's residence, which includes the throne room. Believed to be the work of Umayyad Arabs and dating from about 720 AD, the palace was an extensive complex of royal and residential buildings, surrounded by 1700 meters wall, and was once home to the governor of Amman. Its lifespan was short, it was destroyed by an earthquake in 749 AD and was never fully rebuilt. The skyline of Amman looks a bit like a game of Tetris. From the top of the Bronze Age citadel, the city's highest point, the view seemingly comprises tiny blocks of tightly compacted limestone houses, strewn with washing, topped with water tanks, and interspersed with old cypress trees. While walking down the citadel hill, Aman Panorama Art Gallery has drawn our attention. It focuses on contemporary and modern art, the gallery boasts an impressive collection of paintings, sculptures, photography and other works of visual art. Founded in 2008, Aman Panorama Art Gallery houses a collection of art enthusiasts. The gallery features works from artists from Jordan and surrounding countries. 
and we have here my wall, like the paintings you see, but we have also paintings of 30 pro-local artists. One of them is Mr. Kadumi, and the small paintings here behind you are his paintings, for example. So welcome to Jordan, welcome to the colorful wall. Roman theatre is a famous landmark and a highlight in the Jordan capital. It dates back to the Roman period when the city was known as Philadelphia. The theatre itself is cut into the northern side of a hill to keep the sun off the spectators and has a seating capacity of 6,000. The theatre was built in the 2nd century AD during the reign of Antonius Plus. The standards retire layout meant the ruler sat on the bottom closest to the action. The military and assorted dignitaries took the middle tire, and the general public had to squint from the top. The forum in front of the theatre, with smaller Roman auditorium Odeon on the east, was added by Commodus, although now the only physical remains are a long Corinthian colonnade and some Roman paving stones. On the both sides of the stage, there are two small heritage museums, the Folklore Museum and Museum of Popular Traditions. The Jordanian Museum of Popular Traditions aims at to collect Jordan and Palestinian folk heritage from all over Jordan, to protect and conserve this heritage and to present it for future generations. It has well-preserved displays of traditional costumes, jewelry and face masks along with the mannequins dressed in the traditional costumes of Jordan different ethnic groups. The Jordan Folklore Museum showcases a collection of Jordan cultural heritage items from the desert Badu, villages Reef and towns Medina displaying daily life scents, including weapons, musical instruments and handicrafts from the 19th to early 20th centuries. The row of columns in front of the theatre is what remains of the colonnades which flank the Roman Forum, a public square once among the largest of the Roman Empire, measuring 100 meters by 50 meters. East of it is the Odeon, the smaller Roman auditorium for musical performances and concerts. If you enjoyed watching the video, I encourage you to subscribe, click like and hit notification bell button to get updated of the new releases.